Hi everyone. Welcome to my Shoreline studio. I'm Sybil Muzjig. Today we're looking at patterns. Now it's all about repetition. And in nature, animals particularly use camouflage to hide themselves in the environment or uh, to escape predators and, uh, and for predators to escape detection by their prey. So lots of interesting patterns. Um, zebras, for example, uh, even though they have great stripes and uh, very prominent patterns in the environment, they sort of disappear. So nature uh, deals with pattern in a very sp a specific way. Now, in plants, for example, veining uh, is used to transport nutrients, water, and to store seeds. We have things like pine cones who have very distinctive patterns and dandelions, uh, which are lovely, uh, both as photographs and in, uh, in printmaking. Now, man-made patterns, on the other hand, can be done with drawing materials, paint, special tools, and uh, different ways of working. We're also going to work today with embossed papers. And uh, I have, um, this is a little leaf press that my husband made for me. And uh, it just, uh, let me use, well, I haven't got it quite lined up, but <laughs> I have papers in between and the leaves sit on in between the papers and emboss the paper I found. So that's a very useful tool. Of course, you should always notice things what, that happen when you're working with art materials and we'll be using pastels to bring some of that out. Now, before I go further, I want to acknowledge uh, some of the people who've influenced um, my artwork, and uh, particularly the monotype. And I have a book with me. Um, this one is by Julia Ayers. She's a wonderful artist, and uh, she, I think, coined the term uh, the painterly print. So this is Monotype Mediums and Methods for Painterly Printmaking by Julie Ayers. Wonderful book, uh, certainly worth investing in if you're into monotypes like I am. Um, then, of course, I discovered YouTube. <laughs> and uh, the first person I watched, I think, was Robin McClendon. And uh, she has uh, quite long videos, and uh, you get to relax and watch her work. And uh, she works with these uh, crusty bits. So th those are bits of paint that are on the plate. And uh, as in successive printings, uh, you pick up these little bits and uh, it makes a print. Um, it's so much, uh, it gets it so much character. Then there's Lindsay Warich. Uh, she's the frugal crafter. And uh, you know, she really helps you see that you can print with almost any kind of thing, fabrics and patterns of um, like onion sacks and things like that. There's so many things out there that you could use and you don't have to spend a fortune on um, tools and, and such. And even paints, you don't have to necessarily use the best paints. Uh, craft paints will work if you're not um, you know, exhibiting artwork. If you are, of course, then it, um, it's a good idea to do uh, archival inks and paints and so forth. And one of my favorites, of course, is Barbara Gray from the UK. And uh, she is very meticulous, which I'm not <laughs> kind of <laughs> And um, she has clarity stamps. And uh, she shows people how to use stencils properly, and even brayers. There's some good, really good tutorials, and uh, her work is quite exacting, and really it makes us uh, have something to strive for. So let's get to the plate, and we'll start with uh, leaves, and uh, we will talk about veining and uh, some of the patterns that we are going to be working with, and of course, some of our embossing papers. So first off, I want to show you the paper here. Um, 
and you can see the marks. I put this under a leaf press. Now a leaf press is fairly easy to do. You just need a couple of boards, some papers in between, and lots of weight on top. Or um, my hubby made me a couple of boards and then just put screws in four corners that you can uh, screw down and that makes a great uh, leaf press. But you can do it in books or whatever. And uh, by having the paper there, you have an embossed image. Now it's hard to see because it is relatively, um, it's white and uh, not so easy to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make it visible with a bit of pastel. Sort of like our last exercise. And I'm just going to smudge it on. And now you can see where the leaf was pressed into. That's going to form part of our background. All right. So our leaves here, um, I have variety. What I've done was I've put medium, uh, matte medium. I will always tell you uh, materials I'm using as I, as I go along. Uh, people forget when it sort of comes on at the beginning. So this is golden matte medium and uh, I've just coated the leaf on both sides after it's been put in the press. And that helps with uh, longevity because uh, the matte medium makes it sort of a plastic. And then uh, you have a great, um, you know, stencil here and uh, or mask. Okay, so we're going to put the leaf on. I don't, I'm not worried about the fact that it's in a certain direction on the, on the paper. I'm just going to do some. Uh, organization here first, see what it looks like. Okay, that's not bad. All right, so then we're going to put some paint on. Uh, as usual, I'm using my golden paints um, and I'm introducing a few of the fluid paints, uh, transparent red iron oxide, and I'm also going to be using some carbon black, again, uh, fluid golden, not the open paints like I usually use. So we're going to start off with the transparent iron oxide, which is sort of a yellowish. It's not really all that red. So to get the red tone, we're going to add some alizarin crimson to it. Again, use very little paint. This is my regular golden open paints that last a bit longer. And we're going to roll out our paint here. And any blobby areas, uh, just roll them in a circle so that you work them into the plate. Now this will dry a little bit faster than usual um, because the fluid acrylics dry faster than the open ones. So, And even though I've mixed it, it will still be a little bit faster. I am rearing off on just a piece of scrap paper and ready to print here. So let's get our leaves sort of like we aligned them. Now the pattern on the leaf are the veins you can see. And of course there's patterns of colors as well, which we will work with later. Okay, so now we're just going to leave that there and, and we already have the tone in the background so it won't be totally white. And you just line it up with the top of the plate there, the plate that's underneath the, and I've just pushed it down and we'll use our Beren, my little Japanese tool for getting a nice print. And there we have our first print. And you can see in the background some of the 
embossed details that we had from the leaves. And now you're going to get the lovely veining and so forth, the pattern of the veining. And this one for our ghost print. Now we don't have so much detail on there, but we can try a little bit and see if anything happens. Yep, there's some lines showing up. Okay, so let's just smoosh that around. And it gives quite a nice tone, doesn't it? And that leaf, particular leaf, uh, uh, left a great impression. But we'll use it for this one instead. I used it last night and I think it's still wet. <laughs> okay, let's brayer this. So, and we get a lovely impression. And you're seeing that background tone to give character to the print. So it creates unity, one of the design elements for the patterns and some really lovely pattern stuff happening there. So those two are quite good. Let's go on with more leaves here. Maybe change the pattern a little bit. I'm not going to worry about the background at all. Uh, we've taken off most of the paint and maybe some of the paint that's left on there will do a Robin McClendon here where she leaves all the bits and pieces and that makes things interesting. So we'll change our direction here. And just add. I'm just looking at the composition here of where these pieces are going to be put and the design of it to see if it's interesting. And that looks pretty good, so we just have to remember that. We're going to brayer some color on, and uh, we're going to use some quinacridone nickel azo gold, one of my favorite colors. Now this one is a beast for expense, but save your pennies because it's well worth it. Again, we'll darken that a little bit by just adding a little bit of that alizarin crimson. And let's roll that out. Okay, not too bad. Brayering off on a scrap sheet of paper. Now, we had this one down. I'm just checking the leaf to see We'll use the other side. The middle vein is a little bit more prominent. And then we're going to have to... Well, I put it over a little too far, but that's okay. Things coming off the edges is a really good design element. And then we'll do this, like we said. And then we print. Okay, here's our... Again, we'll reveal the embossing. And we'll smooth it out. Give it a lovely tone. And it's really nice to work in a monochromatic fashion sometimes so that your colors are cohesive. They all work together. A nice little trick. And with color, often less is more. So I'm just lining up the edges of the gel plate and the top of my plexi plate that the gel plate is sitting on. So 
so that's it's a nice way to register things if you have to do a second layer. And so in this case, you get the previous work and our background and this wonderful negative uh, shape. So it depends on what you're looking at here. They're, these lines are very subtle, but they're in there. So the negative shapes are these shapes, right? So the ones you can't name. Okay, ready for the ghost print? There should be uh, lots of veining on there. We have those nice negative spaces. I can, because this is, this paper is, um, my plate is uh, five by seven. I've made the underneath plate um, six by eight. So if you place it on there, it's really easy to line things up. And I'm just, printing that ghost print. And it's a little more subtle. You can see the veining. And to get that to work a little bit better, what we're going to do is another layer. We have this lovely veining in here. And of course, this piece didn't have any embossing on it. But I can replace the leaves, like so. This is a tricky stuff. I have to make sure it's facing the right way. And then this was like this. Now, is that the right way? You just have to make sure. I think it's the right way. Remember, everything reverses um, in printmaking. So be careful, it's moving. You don't want any halos if you can help it, unless that's what you're planning to do. You should always be purposeful in what you do. This one goes here. That's sticky, that's why I'm having trouble. <laughs> okay, we need some paint. Again, we'll stick with our little, with our leather and crimson. And again, our transparent red iron oxide. And I haven't taken anything off the plate other than what the printing has done. We will roll it out. And remember to um, do your brayer in a circle to incorporate the thicker paint because the fluid paints are a lot thinner. And so you'll have to mix them on the plate here. And that will give quite a nice darker color. Hopefully no fuzzles, no little bits and pieces of junk on there. Now, in this case, we're going to use it as, this is where lining up things really counts. So I'm lining up with the top white makes it so much easier. And our Baron. Brayering is quite strongly because we want to get the entire impression of everything. All right. So there you have it. See the leaf patterns now? They're much more visible. And by putting in a well, little off registration, but I can crop that. Um, here, that center vein. So some nice detail and some beautiful neg negative shapes. Often a negative shape is what makes your design work. And organize them, you know, design those in a specific way and you'll be successful. So I pulled a ghost print and uh, I'm 
quite happy with that. So look at uh, the lines and things. So a lovely pattern happening here with, with the lines. And uh, I think we'll do what we did the last time is replace the leaf. Leaves. <laughs> Make sure they're the right way now. And we'll go in reverse. We'll use the yellow as a background. Make sure that's right. There we go. So we'll have a light background and dark leaves. So I wanted to run that because it turned out so well. <laughs> Sticky! Okay, we're going to find my Nicolazzo gold. And rolling it out. I might even put a lighter yellow. These are not your intense cadmium colors. So it's not a bright more of a natural. We're doing more natural tones today. Raw sienna. This has a little bit of white in it, so it's a little bit more opaque. Now my brayering off sheets I often use as well because they can turn up really interesting. So again we're flipping, let's put place that there. So I just have to line it up with the white which makes it a lot easier. Flip it over, okay and rub the back with the Beren. And we're going to put a little bit of pressure on here. That's what the brand is for. Very nice. We have a little bit of white haloing, but look at how pretty that is. And the two colors go together really well, being analogous. And you can see all the veining. Very interesting in terms of pattern. Okay, so now we're finished finally with our leaves. So I have some grouse feathers and as you can see they do have some lovely patterns. <laughs> They're a little bit ratched because uh, I was working with them last night but they are, now they really have character. So, And what we're going to do is I'm going to introduce some Posca pens because they are acrylic and uh, I'm going to look at some of the patterning and just um, for the background, just what it's called uh, echoing. And uh, we'll just use some of the patterns that I see on the, just the marks. Do a little drawing here today. And this will just work in the background. I'm just looking at some of the markings that are on the feathers. And uh, maybe throw in this. If you notice the tone here, it is, it is actually natural tone. I washed the feathers last night, so it's a bit orangey red. So throw, throw some of that in. It has little marks. And uh, in between, so it's just a background. So we're echoing some of the marks that are on the feathers when we, so that'll be in the background. It'll be obscured a bit because I'm going to run a, a layer on top of there. So we're just going to 
out a little bit more. And it's sort of in V-shapes, if you notice. This is a rough grouse. My hubby likes to go grouse hunting in the fall, and so I get a few grouse feathers sometimes. But mostly we just take pictures. <laughs> and I'm just... creating interest here. So put those aside and those for now. I'm going to run the Nicolazzo Gold over it as a nice transparent color. And that will be our first layer. There we go. And the Posca pen work is staying put and is just going to be in the background. Often we do Posca pen work after the fact, so in this case we're doing it before. I have a nice sheet of paper. And we line up with the top of the plate. And that will be our first layer. And as you can see, it's quite lovely. Almost like cave art in, in the tone and character. So we're going to... Um, so this is what the feathers are going to look like. So we're going to put a darker color on. Again, uh, let's work with our lizard and crimson. Our transparent red iron oxide. And just roll that out. We won't worry about rainbow rolls. So just make sure the two are mixed nicely. And might even pick up some more on the second pass. So now we design our feathers to see can we create an interesting pattern with them. Now look at the veining and see what's going to be most prominent. So it's on this side. If you notice, see the center and you could do some calligraphic marks. Um, people used to use quills, of course, feather quills for writing. And we might introduce some of that. Um, I'm just going to make sort of a circular pattern. That could be quite interesting. Splurry them out a little bit. And you should, that's four, right? So you should try and do uneven numbers. That's much more natural. Man-made things are often more linear. But neat, natural things are odd numbers and so forth. Okay. Now you're going to get some haloing uh, because we have things that are three-dimensional. The quill part of a feather. But I don't think that'll matter so much because we already have a nice background. And this is where the brand isn't all that useful. You'll have to do most of it rubbing with by hand. 
Okay, let's have a peek here. Yes. So we have the design of the feathers. And we can take that off. Now we have a choice of leaving it white like that. Which I will do, I think. And then on that first piece, we're going to get, I hope, the color of the feathers. And the background will be our nice background uh, where we echo the pattern of the feathers. So the first one is quite dramatic and this one will be a little more subtle. Yes. But you can see the feathers quite prominently. We do have the halloween problems but I don't really mind it that much. And then we have the nice background patterns. So that's all to the good. Now I'm going to work with a bigger feather. And I'm going to introduce uh, a different kind of pattern, a man-made pattern. And we're going to switch colors up a little bit, maybe a little bit more intensity. I think maybe lizard and crimson on its own. I'm going to do a couple of things here. Um, I'm going to mix this one and I'm going to add uh, just a hair of black to get it really, really dark. And that will be very intense. Okay, rolling this out. Now we're going to work with two patterns now. So this is a little man-made tool. Now the patterns on this feather, as you can see, are angled. See the angles here of the darks? So that's what are we going to do with this. Again, echoing. It's a nice little compositional tool. And so let's see, we're going to maybe run it this way. And then we're going to place our feather. Now because this is a rather large feather, I don't really need much else. And placing this is going to be a real beast. <laughs> and I'm just going to add a little one on the side. Uh, which way? I think like that would be nice. Okay, are we ready to print here? No. It's going to be tricky because I've got to hold the feather down until I get the paper. I need an extra hand. There, I think we've got it. Again, we're going to get a little bit of haloing. But we'll see what happens. Okay. It's not bad. And we'll take a ghost print of that. Okay. 
and you lose a little bit of the pattern at the top here. Probably that printed really well already. Very interesting. And I'm going to see if I can get some of the tone lined up again of the feathers. I'll rub like crazy and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we get a little bit of color on the feathers. And you get that really violent <laughs> background. But it's all in pattern, you see, and we have, we're have we echoing that idea of the marks that are on the feather, even though we can't see them. So that's pretty dramatic. Okay, we're going to be working on black paper here, getting close to the end here. Um, using our feathers again. And this time we're going to have to really lighten up the color, so staying our, in our same palette. A little bit of nickel azo gold. Some raw sienna. And just a touch of our leather and crimson. That will go sort of pinkish. Really have to. I don't want to mush the nice colors too much, but otherwise we won't see the feathers at all. So it has to be a little subtle. Rearing off again, placing our feathers in a nice, interesting pattern. Now the feathers themselves and the marks are going to turn out black because we are... Uh oh, I lost one. <laughs> okay. Oh, here we are. One escaped. And we're using a diagonal design here. Don't forget that's going to reverse, right? So. Okay, we'll see what happens here. These feathers are fairly flat, so there's not a lot of haloing going on, which is kind of nice. Well, that's quite dramatic, isn't it? It's beautiful. So a good design. And it won't print the feathers in the black. I like it stark like that. Now we will print it on white paper for the ghost print. And Had a little bit of embossing on there, and I'm not sure it's going to show up, but we will see. Okay, I, I kind of like it. Um, let's put this aside so we don't confuse the issue. And you can see the feathers. Um, it might lend itself to pen and ink after. Um, I'll think about it. <laughs> One final. And this is a peacock feather. Now this could be maybe too subtle. I'm going to run uh, the nickel azo gold. 
just a bit of white, I think, or let's see, maybe yellow ochre. It should show up. You'll probably pick up some of the background colors, which is good, out there good. Whoops, <laughs> getting carried away. And there. And the peacock feathers should turn out black. If we're really lucky. And I'm not sure you're going to see the little feathers. It's all interesting. Oh, yes. Okay, let's run that again with a slightly lighter color. It's a bit dark. We'll print the ghost print quickly. And that turned out quite nice. Okay, more white. Raw sienna. Maybe a touch of the alizarin. And a bit more white. be better. Remember to roll those heavier colors out. Okay, cross your fingers. Whatever it takes. And let's places in a beautiful way. So that the design is lovely. And black paper. Lining it up. Burnishing or brayering. So we get a good imprint. Yes, much better. And there you have it. So that was our final. And uh, I hope you enjoyed all our little prints here. I might print that um, very quickly here. Our ghost print. See how that turns out. And then we're done for the day. Put that down. Well, it's a bit subtle, and you can't really put the feather back because you're never going to get it the same. So it'll have to be, it is what it is. So that's it. Well, that was a lot of fun as usual, and I'm so glad you could join me today. Um, of course, uh, working with uh, fluid acrylics for change, and uh, our feathers, and our leaves, and marking making tools. So check this out for yourself, and uh, uh, give me a comment when you see the video, and maybe post some of your work. That would be awesome. Thank you so much for joining me, and we'll see you another time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.